And we're back with some news out of Duplin County. With prom night coming soon, the Duplin County EMS held a public awareness training exercise at Wallace Rose Hill High School for the dangers of students drinking and driving. The program is designed to make students aware of the dangers of underage drinking and driving and how one small choice can change someone's life forever. If we save just one life, then we have succeeded in making the students aware of the dangers of underage drinking, says Duplin County Sheriff's Captain Tim Jones. The sad truth of drinking and driving is that over 75% of the time the drunk driver walks away from the accident without serious injuries. It's not what they do to themselves, but what they do to the innocent victims. Underage drinking is even tougher because the driver has little or no experience driving, and when they add alcohol to the mix, deadly things can happen. Peer pressure is a key factor to underage drinking. Young people throughout time have always had to deal with peer pressure, and sometimes this can cause the person to make a deadly wrong choice. They may be an honor roll student, hard worker, or just a good kid, but one wrong choice can ruin their lives forever. This is why the Duplin County Sheriff's Department, Duplin County EMS, and local police and fire have joined forces to make the public aware of the dangers of underage drinking. The drill at Wallace Rose High included students from North Duplin and the Early College. Next month in the same drill will be held at East Duplin for East Duplin and James Keenan students. Taking part in the training session in Wallace were the Teachy Fire Department, Wallace Fire Department, Faison Fire, Fire Department, Green Evers Fire Department, and Duplin County EMS, Wallace Police Department, and the North Carolina Highway Patrol. The eighth and excuse me. The eighth annual Wallace Chamber of Commerce golf tournament turned out to be postcard perfect. When the twenty-five team teams of golfers teed up at River Landing in Wallace Friday morning. The temperatures were in the low 60s and as the teams concluded their 18 holes of golf early in the afternoon, the temperature hovered in the 70s. Course conditions were excellent, says co-chair Bill Cook. Some of the golfers were playing the course for the first time, but everyone enjoyed the fellowship. Fellow co-chair Laura Moretti called the day a great success for the participants. Cook and Moretti praised the organizing skills of Wallace Chamber Executive Director Lou Powell. It's the Wallace Chamber's sole fundraiser of the year, and they say they're planning to hold it again the same time next year. The team of Nick Garrett, Brett Strickland, Nick Bell, and Chris Jernigan took first place with a score of 56. Second place finishers were Jimmy Smith, George Sherrill, Eddie Miller, and Jim Scott with a score of 59. Third place went to the team of Rick Batchelor, Tim Batchelor, J.P. Phillips, and Tom McKeever with a score of 60. Breakfast was served by McDonald's and lunch was provided by Subway. The golfers ate on the veranda patio at the clubhouse. Special contestants took place, contests took place throughout the day with drawings conducted by Chamber President Hugh Kaysen. Come join a North Carolina wildlife officer for an informative program about North Carolina wildlife rules and regulations and what it takes to have a career as a North Carolina wildlife officer. The program will start at 11 o'clock on May 7th under the picnic shelter at Cabin Lake County Park near Beulahville. This program is free to the public and pre-registration is appreciated. Please call the park office at 910-298-3648 to pre-register. Now for some news out of Pender County. The Topsail High School production of Little Shop of Horrors is in rehearsal now with opening night planned for April 28th. The musical production features the work of more than 60 students both on stage and behind the scenes. They've worked so hard, says Alicia Melton, theater arts instructor at Topsail High School. We've been rehearsing since January and staying until 9 at night to build and paint the scenery. This is a big production, she says. For Italo Medelius, a junior, this is his first time playing a major part in a production. He plays the owner of the little shop. It's harder, he says. You have to do vocal practice and learning the lines. Little Shop of Horrors will run April 28th through April 30th and opens each night at 7 o'clock p.m. Tickets are $5 and may be purchased in advance or at the door. Contact Alicia Melton at 910-270-2755 for more information. <clears throat> Burgall Town Manager Chad McEwen said if he's ever made a mistake, it's underestimating how contentious a park could be. Several downtown Burgall residents appeared at the town board meeting April 12th to complain about a park plan for the 300 block of Wilmington Street, which is one of the finishing touches to a six-year project to provide a walking path and other amenities along Osgood Canal, which snakes its way through the town. 
Neighbors of the park project complained they had not been personally notified about the plans and public hearings and that a proposed six-foot fence was too imposing. Wilmington Street is too busy and with a minimal maintenance staff, the city would not be able to maintain the park. A complaint signed by 15 neighbors was presented to the board and several requested another public hearing. Others said those complaining about the park were demonstrating the not in my backyard response may risk future grants to the town. The North Carolina Parks and Recreation Trust Fund provided funding help for the project. Commissioners Wilfred Robbins and Howard Walker Jr. said they were up for another public hearing since so many were concerned. However, Commissioner Lewis Davis said the project is nearing its end and the town should get on with it. A motion to hold another public hearing was failed three to two. McEwen was asked to provide a map of the plans for the park, which will not include bathroom facilities or a parking lot as originally envisioned. It will include fencing, a gazebo, and a slide set. The town also approved buying sandblasting and painting a boxcar to be bought from CSX and brought to the Depot Museum from Wallace. The caboose will be cleaned and painted. A Vietnam Veterans Appreciation Day will be held April 23rd at 1 o'clock at the Surf City Soundside Park. Families and friends are invited. For more information, call the American Legion Post 167 in Hampstead, 910-329-1450. Also, Surf City will celebrate the National Day of Prayer at the Welcome Center at noon on May 5th. The city will also recognize National Arbor Day at noon April 29th. <clears throat> at the Surf City Family Park, 911 South Topsail Drive. Kids, bring your parents out to the Surf City's annual Easter egg hunt on Saturday, April 23rd. Kids 0 to 10 can join in the fun with three age groups, raffles, prizes, and lots and lots of goodies. The egg hunt will be begin at 1030 at Soundside Park next to the Swing Bridge in Surf City. Don't forget to bring a basket or a bag to collect your eggs. Businesses are welcome to participate by donating individually wrapped candy or donating Easter baskets filled with goodies from their businesses or just plastic eggs filled with a piece of candy and a coupon or business card for their business. For more information, visit www.townofsurfcity.com or call Surf City Community Center at 910-328-4887. I'm Kristen Fountain and that's it for Community News Today from Cape Fear Newspapers. Please tune in to Topics Design TV every weekday at 2 for more of your community news. In the meantime, keep up with your community's events in the Advertiser News, Pender Chronicle, Wallace Enterprise, and Warsaw Faceon News. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you right here tomorrow.